I've been playing a little bit lately with logic gates, and in particular, I've done a couple of videos around the NOR gate. There is a chip, the CD4001, which is a quad two input NOR gate IC. And uh, that has allowed us, for instance, in the past to do a couple of projects involving SR latch. Now the set reset latch is got, has got this weird, um, you can see this crossover here where the output of one NOR gate feeds into the input of the other one. And uh, because of the logic of the way that this circuit is set up, this results in a latch. And that's terrific and it works pretty well. And uh, we've seen that before. There is a problem though with an illegal state. And, uh, and so to get around that problem, there's the so-called gated SR latch. And the gated SR latch has these AND gates also in the circuit. And furthermore, the inputs to the AND gates coming from this data signal here, this button, uh, is has got this uh, one going to one AND gate and the other one goes through an inverter. So they can't be the same at the same time. So if that's one, then this comes out zero and vice versa. The other thing that the gated uh, flip-flop, sorry, the gated SR latch has is usually a switch here which will not allow a change unless it's enabled. Now, to capitalize on that, we can actually put a clock in here such that, for instance, on a rising edge uh, of this clock, then the change is made. And that's called a gated, sorry, a clocked flip-flop. Uh, so that's gated, clocked, SR latch. So with all that in mind, how does it actually work? Well, uh, what we can do here is it's, I've set this pretty slow. So if I, if I flick this switch when it's on a low, nothing happens. But then as soon as it goes to the high, it flips over. So we'll go to, on the low cycle again, and then rising edge and it flips. And in fact, what you can do is instead of having this active for that whole whatever it is second, you can uh, maybe just build the clock in so it's just a quick pulse. Because this data could be arriving very, very quickly, and you don't have to wait every single time for the rising edge. So what you can do, in fact, uh, is just have little pulses instead of a long, um, you know, rise, so that uh, then it's active for all that time. So I'm keen to explore that as well. But the other thing that did occur to me too is that instead of using AND gates here, because you've got a couple of uh, NOR gates left over from uh, this chip, would it be possible to swap them in and what would happen? So I just on the simulator deleted these guys and uh, just pop these guys in. We'll connect it up the same way. So the clock goes to one side and the other and then you've got your signal coming in and your inverted signal and finally connecting the output of one NOR gate to the input of the other one. Okay, so it's latching, which is good. And then we'll see what happens on the rising edge. So, oh, it changes straight away. Okay, so it looks like it's triggered maybe on the falling edge. Just to check that, I'll just flip it when it's right. There it is, it's risen and boom, yep. And then as it falls, then that triggers. So there's a few different things to try out here. Does the original AND gate uh, flip-flop work? Uh, and if so, can we then just swap in a couple of the NOR gates from the same chip to get, uh, well, effectively the same thing, but on a falling edge instead of on a rising edge. So uh, let's get to the breadboard and find out. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Well, we've got a 555 timer. Now, I made this a long time ago. There'll be a link up here. And I made it because I wanted to do PCB design because I love the 555 timer and I just wanted to use it to produce a square wave. So um, that's what that project was about. And I thought, gee, one day I might need a square wave. And here we are. So the square wave is coming across to this separate breadboard. And I've got it as a separate breadboard because I'm going to alter the clock coming in to that sort of square wave to just a pulse. Uh, but I just want to see that this works firstly as described uh, and certainly as simulated. All right, so the then we've got power coming into the board and we've got a button and that's currently giving a low signal to one AND gate and then via this transistor, this is an SS8050, it's giving a high to the other AND gate on the other side. 
the clock's coming into one input and then this little yellow wire is bringing it around to the other side to the other input. So that's pretty much as per the, um, the simulator and the diagram. Then from the output of the AND gates, we are going to the inputs of uh, NOR gates on either side here with the crossover circuitry that we saw in the simulator as well. So low here and Q dash is high and Q is low. And what we're looking for is a change and it should be on the rising edge. So I'm going to deliberately pick when this is off to change it and then we'll see what happens. So off, nothing happens until the rising edge and then that's latched and on as long as I'm holding this down. And again, when I let go on a low, there you go, and it changes to the other side. Now, if I were to push this on a high, it should change straight away. And there it goes. And then let go on a high, and it should change straight away. And that's working. So that's fantastic. Now what I want to do is reconfigure this as a pulse. And then the final thing I want to do is swap out the AND uh, gate here. This is the quad um, in, or two input quad AND gate for another NOR gate to see if we can get, again, that behavior we saw in the simulator. Let's do that. Okay, so same dealio here, except that now I've got a 1K resistor going from the clock signal to ground, and uh, the clock signal itself is coming through a 100 nanofarad uh, capacitor. And what that should do is it should give a quick pulse and then discharge until the next time. So we're not getting that square wave being high the whole time. But it should still work to uh, to change the signal. So let's try that. So low, and there's the pulse, and it changes to high. And then we'll go low again, and there's a pulse to change it uh, to low. So yeah, that seems to be working uh, really well. Um, the only thing thing I need to do now is to actually just swap this out and let's see if it works with the uh, the CD4001. So here we are and we've got the CD4081 out and, um, and here it is here and I've put in a CD4001 which is the quad 2 input NOR gate. So NOR gate and NOR gate. Being a bit lazy I suppose because this is a quad NOR gate, so I could actually do all of this on the one chip, but it was just easier to swap out and straight back in again. One thing which you will notice is that um, with this low, this is high, so that has reversed. Uh, so Q is high and Q dash is low. And uh, the other thing which we observed on the simulator is that we had a falling edge for the change, not a rising edge. So if I press this when it's high, Nothing happens until it's low. Let's get that again. That's high, boom, and then it changes. And as long as I'm holding this down, which is low, then uh, then this is high and that's low. And then again, if it's high, no change, and boom, it's changed back again. And then if I uh, change on a low, so let's do that. Yep, it changes straight away. Now that should mean that if we put it in pulse mode, it should change pretty much immediately because it's low most of the time. That's probably the final thing to try. Let's do it. All right, here we are in pulse mode. Uh, these are all NOR gates. And so because it's low all the time until it's pulsed, this should change pretty much straight away. Yeah, and it does. So um, yeah, that is uh, pretty much as expected via the simulator. Not a bad little circuit. Not sure what I would use it for at this stage, but as we develop these uh, multi-chip logic circuits, you never know. That's the circuit working for this week. See you next week.